Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Chicks, and you are watching Chicks Tech Reviews. And today I've got my hands on the e great A5 Android TV box. So as usual, we'll be doing a quick unboxing followed by a series of tests testing 4K videos, HD streaming, gaming and finishing off with a benchmark and Wi-Fi test. So let's begin with the specs. I'll put the specs on the screen so you guys can have a quick read. So the CPU is a high 3798 quad core running at 2 GHz. The GPU is the Mali 720. You got 2 gigs of DDR3 RAM, 8 gigs of internal storage, dual band Wi-Fi supporting BGN and AC, Bluetooth version 4, Android version 5.1, supports Ultra HD 4K videos at 60 frames per second, supports HDR10 and this also supports Dolby Atmos and DTS. Yes I know guys this is running Android 5.1, I still wanted to check this box out because it has great specs um, and a really good design. So I want to see how this operates, I want to see how the smooth this runs and I also want to check out whether there is an update available so we can get Android version 6 on here. So this is everything you get in the box and as you can see there's quite a bit, you've got a user manual here, a power adapter, but it's nice that this also came with a UK adapter so I can use it here in the UK. A HDMI cable. It's quite nice to see that they included an AV cable here. So they've included a SATA cable with this which is very interesting which means you can probably put a hard drive in this unit which makes things even better. But let's have a look at the TV box itself and here it is. Wow it is completely metal build. Um, at the top you've got a shiny black finish with the E-Grate logo and the E-Grate logo is actually engraved. So it's hard to see on the camera but it goes in deep, it's engraved and it looks cool, it looks really nice. At the front you've actually got this LCD display, um, A5 logo and the physical power button. If we keep going, there you go guys. You've got an external SATA connection here and now you can plug uh, any hard drive into that. Um, the only thing I'm a bit worried about is you're going to have an internal hard drive on top of this unit. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to look but the feature is there guys in case you need it and then you have a USB 2 port and if we keep going on the back you have your optical out and over here which look like buttons they're actually just caps you take them off they're actually just caps to protect your AV connection, your coaxial connection so you've got all of that there, HDMI there you've got your network LAN port you've got your reset hole there which is just about visible power socket there and this is where your Wi-Fi antenna goes and if I just screw that on very quickly and that's your Wi-Fi antenna screwed on micro SD card slot on the other side and a USB 3 port and another USB 2 port awesome that this has got USB 3 size and weight this is a big unit but to give you guys an idea of the size I will bring in as I always do the H96 Max if I place that on top you can see you can see the obvious size difference there and in thickness so it's it's like double the size than the H96 Max um, because it's made completely of metal it's actually heavier as well a lot heavier now I'm going to get this hooked up I'm sure you guys are excited to see as I am how good this performs and what the UI looks like so let's get on with it I'll get this all connected up and I'll be right back So here is the home screen for this TV box. The large icons at the top are fixed and cannot be changed and the smaller icons at the bottom can be customised and changed with your favourite apps. Simply click on the plus icon, add and remove the apps you want and they will immediately appear at the bottom. So let's go to system settings and check out storage. So this box has 8 gigs of internal storage, from that you have an available 3.52 gigs to use. So let's have a quick look at the apps. So these are all the apps you get as standard on the system, I have not installed anything, these are your standard apps. So you don't get many apps to begin with, but you do have Vid on XMBC, which is basically a Kodi media player, and you've got the Google Play Store, so you can go ahead and install any app you like. Miracast connected to my Samsung phone instantly, and I was able to mirror my screen, and as you can see, it works nice and fast, with no lag at all. So Vidon XMBC is basically a custom version of Kodi, um, however it is based on Kodi 16.1 Jarvis. 
You can also go to the official Google Play Store and you can download the latest Kodi version, which is Kodi 17.3 Krypton. You've got the usual Google Play Store on this, but there is also another custom app store where you can download loads of cool apps and games completely free. So the first thing I'd like to test is playing 4K video samples from a USB drive. So let's go ahead and play the first video file. So that was playing 4K videos from USB Drive. Let's move on to the YouTube test. The maximum resolution available for YouTube streaming is 1080p. Best ones are. You want the mercy? Play by the rules. your name? Baby. Your name's Baby. B-A-B-Y Baby. -B -Y -Baby. <laughs> In this business. The moment you catch feelings is the moment you catch a bullet. So that was the YouTube test. Let's move on now to the gaming test. In the Wi-Fi speed test, this box got download speeds of 17.37 megabits per second and upload speeds of 9.69 megabits per second. And I was using my hotel Wi-Fi for these tests. In the Antutu benchmark test, this box achieved an incredible score of 39,641. So let's see how that compares to the others. So this is my top benchmark performance chart. This chart simply shows you which are the highest overall performing boxes. However, when choosing a TV box, you must also consider other factors such as the home screen, Android version, size, appearance, and of course, the price. So we have a new number two in the quad-core TV box chart. The E-Great A5 has achieved an incredible benchmark score, which earns it a position at the top of the table. It'll be interesting to see which TV box I review next and what overall performance it will get. Please be aware the prices shown are just a guideline as they are constantly changing on a daily basis. So there you have it guys, that was the E-Great A5 Android TV box. Very interesting design and impressive benchmark scores. The home screen is very simple and easy to navigate and keeps everything running very fast. However, it does look a little bland and dated. This box does a great job of playing 4K movies from a USB drive and streaming 1080p videos on YouTube. You have the Mali 720 and the games ran very nicely and I found no issues when playing games. In fact, playing games on this box was a great experience. So this is the game controller I use for all my Android TV games. This is the G600 controller. I'll put the links in the description box below so you can check it out. You also have an external SATA connection so you can directly attach a hard drive to it, which I could not test as I did not have a spare hard drive available when shooting this video. The original remote that came with this box is responsive and does a great job. However, I highly recommend you grab a wireless mini keyboard for a better experience. Bottom line is, this is a powerful Android TV box which is great for 4K movies and games. You also have all your DTS and Atmos sounds. However, I feel this is priced too high for what you're getting. $200 for an Android 5.1, 8GB storage and single band Wi-Fi is totally overpriced. If this box was selling around $100, then that would be justifiable. At $200, I would be looking to get the Nvidia Shield.
With that being said, I will leave the links in the description in case you guys want to check this product out. And if you like it, you can of course go ahead and purchase one for yourselves. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a brilliant day.